Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video. Today's video features this poinsettia and pinecone set from the Rabbit Hole Designs. This is one of my illustrations and this is the only stamp and die set we're going to be using for our cards today. So um, I originally did not intend to make two cards. I intended to make one card, but I made this background, really, really loved it. It just didn't it was too much for the coloring. Um, and so I just ended up making two cards. So I have some Navy cardstock. I've treated this with my uh, anti-static tool. This is the Cottontail tool from the Rabbit Hole, which is hands down my favorite anti-static tool that I've ever used. And then I'm using some gold metallic pigment ink. I'm going to stamp. This is just the pine and pine cone branch. Um, I'm just going to stamp this down. I do like to stamp mine twice just to make sure that I have really good coverage because this is a more detailed image. I want to make sure that I don't lose any of that detail in the embossing. So I'm just going to stamp that down. Now you can stamp multiples of these and then go in with your gold embossing powder and heat set them. But I'm going to be honest, I don't know if it's just because I am I, if I too slow or maybe my ink pad is dry, but it just seems like I never move fast enough to get the same coverage I would get if I just stamped it and heat embossed it immediately. So I choose to do mine this way. I stamp them, I heat emboss them, I stamp them, I heat emboss them, so on and so forth. So forth. But you may not have to do that depending upon your situation. So I'm just going to fill this whole, this is an A2 size piece of navy cardstock. I'm going to fill the whole thing. I like to start with one that fills up the middle so that way I can just work around the edges to fill everything else in. It's almost like making our own um, pattern paper except for probably cheaper because you know how those metallic uh, pattern papers can be, they can be quite expensive. So Anywho, I'm just going to work around the edges, stamping these along, and then heat embossing them as I go. Um, this ended up being a Christmas card, um, honestly, that you could give to anybody. You could give this to family, or you could give this to your boss. You could give this to a stranger. Uh, you could donate them to church or a nursing home. Like, it's just a good... Um, just a good everybody kind of card. Here, because I wasn't cleaning my stamp, which you really should, I wasn't cleaning my stamp in between, I was being lazy, um, I did get a little bit of gold on my background where it didn't belong, and then of course my embossing powder stuck to it, so I just knocked off the embossing powder, and really at the end of the day, by the time it's all said and done, you don't even notice those two little spots. Um, this is the last one that I've done, and this, like I said, the whole panel is filled up. I really loved the way that this came out, um, and that's why I ended up turning it into another card, because I didn't want to just, um, you know, put it in my stash, like, oh, I'll use it later and never get around to using it, because I think it's beautiful. <laughs> uh, and that's one of the benefits of, um, using a more detailed image with embossing powder. You don't have to do much else to it. Here, what you see me doing is the powder tool does leave a little bit of powder behind on your cardstock. And so if you're using darker colors, it can kind of dull the color. I just like, after everything, my heat setting is cooled. Um, I just rub it on what you saw me do, my shirt sleeve there, or oftentimes like the leg of my pants just to get all of the dust off. It doesn't leave any residue on my clothes, like visible. And I wear, you know, my navy blue robe and, you know, you can't see it on there but it does just kind of buff it off of my cardstock to make sure that it stays its true color. For the background, I used some Gold Perfect Pearls and splattered those into the background. And then a girlfriend of mine recommended this Liquitex um, white. And so here's the thing. She apparently has acrylic ink and what I bought was acrylic gouache. Um, and so I did end up buying some Copic white as well, just to kind of have a couple of things in my arsenal. This did work though, uh, but I will have to try the one she actually recommended me. Um, so let's get into the, the, the coloring. What you see me trying here is I knew that in order to stamp on dark cardstock, in order for me to do no line coloring, I was going to have to use probably a pigment ink so that I would be able to see it. I thought I would try to see, because Distress Oxides have pigment properties, I thought I would try to see if that would work for me. Um, I used Hickory Smoke. It did not work. Um, the Picket Fence one might be different 
uh, that one may work because it is uh, white as well. But I ended up just switching over to a white pigment ink. Um, I'm going to stamp down, this is the single poinsettia and the uh, leaf. And then I'm going to stamp myself a bunch more leaves and a bunch more flowers. But I wanted to show you here, you don't even need to necessarily re-ink it every time. The second generation stamping is enough to for you to be able to maintain the lines. Um, so I just stamp it, stamp it again, ink it, stamp it, stamp it again until I have as many leaves or flowers as I would like. And I think I did five five leaves and three flowers. You'll see here at the end, I haven't stamped the other flowers yet because I didn't know what layout I wanted to do. Um, but we're going to be using colored pencils today, which is why it took me so very long to get this video up because it took me so very long to color these images. First and foremost, I'm using Prismacolored pencils. You can use whatever you have on hand. You do want a white. Um, that's kind of what makes the difference in this particular technique. Um, but you do want to make sure they're sharp. It's very hard to get into those little areas. If you have a blunted end, you want to have a sharp colored pencil. I just use the uh, Prisma sharpener, but again, whatever you have on hand works. Now let's talk about the two ways that I color with pencils. First, I fill in the whole area white. I'm going to show you uh, one and one on each side of this leaf. Um, so I fill in the whole area white and then I go in with my lightest color. Then I work out from my lightest color to my darkest color and my darkest back into my lightest. This puts down multiple layers of color so that we're really filling up the uh, tooth of the paper and it's going to give us really smooth, nice, bold color on our darker colored cardstock. But it also takes longer because we're doing more layers. And what did I just tell you? Colored pencils takes me 500 years. So I don't always do this. Um, I do it in larger areas. If I need to cover more area, obviously, I want to make sure that it's solid and it looks nice. Um, but in smaller areas, you don't always have to do it, you know, four, five, and six times. So... On the other side, you'll see kind of the shortcut version of it, and I do alternate between the two, dependent upon what I am coloring. There is another version, which is actually the original way I was taught by my girlfriend, Lydia Fiedler. She's endlessly talented if you've never seen her stuff, um, but she does a layer of white in between each layer. So you do your lightest green, a layer, or I'm sorry, a layer of white, your lightest green, a layer of white, your next darkest green, your mid-tone, and then a layer of white, and then your darkest color. And this builds up, and it's like luminescent, um, which I think is gorgeous. I just don't have the patience for it. And I recognize that about myself. You may have the patience for it, and then I say all the best to you. You do whatever works for you. So in my cheater version over here, I start with my white. I then put down my lightest color all over, and then I just skip directly to my darkest color. With my darkest color, I put down any of the areas that I want to be darkest, then I work backwards towards my lightest color. So we're still putting down several layers of pencil. We're just not putting down as many as we were in the first version. To me, I can't I can't really tell a difference between the two sides. So there's sometimes where I feel like it's okay to go ahead and take the shortcut and not do the full six layers. These the inside of the poinsettias is going to be one of those times that I take that shortcut. Not a lot of real estate here, so I don't feel like I have to go over it so many times. Um, you do when you're coloring with any, well, any no line coloring, you don't necessarily want to color two objects that are right next to each other. It, that's a really quick way to kind of muddy your lines and lose where you're at. So if you want to color multiple of something, like you see me doing here with the stamen, uh, color them the ones that are not next to each other. Color them in like a triangle, kind of. Um, and then here I'm just using some browns and some um, yellowish oranges or orangish browns to color these in. But each time I am always starting with that white um, to get the base color down. Now, if you don't have white or you aren't necessarily coloring something a super light color, you don't necessarily have to go in with a white as a base. You could use a light gray, a very light gray, um, 
or you could use a super light version of your lightest color. So let's say like the poinsettias, a good portion of them are red. You could go in with a super light pink and fill in the area. And it, basically you need something brighter on the bottom to fill up the tooth for the bolder colors to sit on top of. So they really kind of pop off the page. Now, what am I doing here? Well, as you guys might imagine, now that card making is my full-time job, um, I color a lot and I love it. I love everything about it. But sometimes you got to mix it up. And so I've colored a lot of red points at us. And instead of doing red, what I wanted to do was something a little bit different. And so I went on the Google machine, as we like to call it, and I just looked up the colors of poinsettias. And they had ones that were these spotted uh, poinsettias. They're red, and then they have like some beigeish yellow spots. And I thought, well, those are super interesting, and I've never colored those. So that's what I'm doing here. There's no rhyme or reason to the spots. Some spots are bigger. Some spots are just little speckles. Um, some spots are like a quarter of the uh, petal uh, or leaf. Uh, pe you know, poinsettias are, they're just leaves. Um, but anywho, I thought they were really interesting. And so that is what I decided that I was going to do. In order to do that, you guys saw, I went in, I put down my white, I shaded it with some grades, and then I went over it very lightly with, I believe it's goldenrod. Yeah. And I didn't apply a lot of pressure. I literally just went right over top of it just to kind of tint that um, space for the spot and really liked the way those turned out. Then the rest of it is more of a true red. Um, so... Again, I'm working in sections. I'm only doing one petal at a time so I don't lose my lines. And even the section where the poinsettia folds over itself, I'm not even doing that section. I'm not filling it all in. That's a completely separate section and I'm treating it as such. So I'm when we're doing shading, we're adding shading where two things meet or where an object lays on top of the other. So where it meets the stamen, it's going to be a lot darker. Where the petal is folded over itself, there will be a shadow cast. So the portion that we're coloring here that's folded over will be the lightest. If you go in with your white and then your lightest color and it's not bright enough, just do it again. Just add a little bit more white and then go over it again to blend it out and it will really bring it up to make it look like it is catching the light. Um, and so I'm going to show you a couple of petals here. I think I did four. Um, and then I will show you the end petals and how to how I uh, do with coloring multiples at one time. But really, I mean, if you're not comfortable with no line coloring, and I know a lot of us aren't, I'm not. Um, but it is, it is kind of a slow process because you don't want to lose those lines. You want to maintain them so that you know exactly where you're putting your things. So um, yeah, so now that we're 13 minutes into the video, uh, these are on sale. <laughs> uh, the rabbit hole, I told you guys in an earlier video just because I didn't want you to miss out on it. Um, and also I didn't know when I said, I, they were on my list to use because it had been a while since I used them. Um, but I had no idea I was going to go in with pencils. Uh, had I known, <laughs> I'm glad I said something earlier because like I said, pencils just take me a really, really long time. Um, but anyway, they are on sale. All of the, um, Christmas items, Christmas stamps and coordinating dies are 30% off. They have blending brushes on sales. Stencils are 40% off. This is good through tomorrow, the 20th. Also, tons and tons of pre-Black Friday sales are out. I have been updating my sales page um, to reflect those as I come across them. Obviously, it's the weekend and I am home with my kids, so I'm doing my level best to keep up with them, um, but, you know, I have to wait for nap time or bedtime or, you know, any of those other times. So, um yeah, that is what's going on with that. Any of you who go out of your way to use my links, I genuinely appreciate that. That's a great way to support me and the content that I put out there without having to cost you any extra, just merely the time to find the link and click on it. So with that said, I do want to tell you about, um, so over on my, um, 
new website, there is a uh, sign up. You can, you know, request to be like on the email list so you don't miss anything. Um, and when you request to be on that sign up, um, it gives you the option to, you know, you just put in your name, your email, all of those things. Um, that'll be hap- though that will be super helpful for when um, the classes start up. I will be doing classes. I told you guys this before. I'm just, I'm not there yet. But as soon as I am, if you're on that email list, you will be notified. Um, but so anywho, I received this um submission from a follower who was signing up for um, the email list and she left me a comment. This comes directly to my email. Let's go back to the card real quick. So you could probably see I'm kind of going back to those other petals as well. If you want your top petal to be lifted, you either have to make it lighter or add more shadows behind it. So one of the ways I'm doing that is there's a dark brown that I used for the stamen. And if I need a, a petal to be darker, I will add in a little bit of that brown. Also, if I need a top petal to be lighter, I will go in and add a little bit of a white highlight. So this is going to help lift them. Here, the vast majority of our coloring is done for this flower, but I am working on several at a time. Notice, none of them are touching each other. They're all completely separate, so I don't have to worry about losing my lines. Also, I'm doing each color at a time. So I'm going in and filling in my white all at one time, and then I will go in with the next color and then I will fill that in as well. I'm working around my spots here so some of them look a little crazy but um, I'll go in with my lightest color and then completely fill those in. Then I will go to my darkest color and add my shadows across all three of them. This is a way that you can speed it up without risking losing your lines and being a little lost about where you need to go or your no line image becomes a blobby because we don't have those crisp clear lines um, that you would normally see from a stamp. Also, poinsettias are very, um, do you call them veins in a uh, leaf? I think you do. Um, but anyway, you can see them in both the actual leaves and then the leaf portion that we call the flower. Um, and they're very apparent in a poinsettia. So I am using my darkest color of red to add in that little detail. And then I am using the gray, the darkest color of gray, which for me was a 50% warm gray. Um, in the, in the spotted section. I'm using the gray to add those in. Uh, and that's just another detail that you can add in to, you know, make them kind of pop and look more realistic. So anyway, back to this submission. So anyway, she, um, her name is Sarah. Sarah, if you're listening. Um, so she signed up for this and then she sent me a uh, message, which was so very kind. And she said, like, I always... Um, you know, I always come to your website to click on your links before I do my shopping. So you get a little uh, bit of a commission, which is very kind of her. Time is like our most precious commodity. And if you're willing to give me your time, I will be nothing but grateful for it because I know how hard that is. Um, so she goes to my website and she said, I haven't been shopping in a while. And, you know, I came to your website, lo and behold, you have this whole new website and, you know, I love it and it suits you. And, and um, you know, she was just nothing but encouraging. But then at the end of it, she said, uh, I was just about to hit send when this ran through my mind and I thought I'd share it in hopes that you need it just now too. And she she sent me a little scripture, a little prayer. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. And see, I'm starting to get <laughs> What a... She just touched my heart. Sarah, thank you. Thank you for thinking of me. Because you don't know, like, what somebody else is going through or when they need it. And so I would just encourage you guys to just be kind to each other. And if you feel compelled to say something kind, even if you feel silly doing it, like, do it anyway. Do it anyway. Because... 
you don't know what other people are on the other end of it and whether or not they need to hear it. And it was just so incredibly thoughtful and, and loving of her. And Sarah, I'm, I'm very, very grateful. Um, so anyway, that's my little, I didn't think I was, well, I mean, I'm a crier. Who are we kidding? That's just me. That's just, that's my, that's who God made me. Um, and I'm fine with it. <laughs> I'm fine with it. I'm not going to apologize for it. So, um, here I am doing my sentiment. This particular one, it didn't matter how I stamped it because um, I was going to cut it out with the corrugating dies. I'm just gold heat embossing this the same way we did before. I know we just did cards with this navy. Um, we just did three cards with this navy in the last video. Uh, but I actually made these first and also blue is my favorite. So I'm not going <laughs> to... I'm not going to pretend like I'm not going to use it. I did go on this morning um, and see if my uh, cardstock was in stock so that I could purchase some more because the holiday season is upon us and honestly, I'm only going to use more blue. Um, so here I cut them out with all with their coordinating dies and I have laid them out. This is a different layout for me and um, I was actually very much inspired by an older card from Yanis Makula, where I think it's a die that actually cuts them out this way, but it's got this little um, visual triangle, and I thought it was really, really beautiful. And so I was like, well, that's different. I'm going to mimic that. Um, so thankful for people in the business who inspire us, right? Because I knew the last one was too much, but just the flowers was a little too little. What I decided to do was strategically place my gold embossing so that it was kind of peeking out from my flowers without overtaking the whole background. And I was very, very pleased with the way that this looked. It did require me to kind of lay everything out so that I could see where my pine would be hitting. Um, but I think it was well worth the effort because the card did end up being so pretty and you have these, you know, little gold metallic accents in the background. And uh, so, like I said, um, I, I just think that that was a much better way to go. Do I still have stuff going on in the background that's interesting? Yes, but not so much that it's just detracting from the coloring that I literally spent hours on. Like, that's got to be the star of the show, folks. I spend too much time on it for it not to be. Back to this uh, card that I didn't even know I was making. Here I have some uh, gold cardstock. I believe this one is uh, the matte gold from Concord 9th. This is a stray piece that I have. I keep uh, my scraps on like a little filing folder on my desk. So I just pulled one out, trimmed. Uh, this is after I trimmed down my stamp piece, by the way. Just so there's like a little eighth of an inch border. Nobody is going to see the back of this because it will be sandwiched on my card front. And then I save myself, well, I mean... Honestly, I already used that arch on another card. Um, in fact, it might have been the cards that I made last time with these points out of us, to be quite honest. Um, but so now it has a little gold mat. I have heat embossed my Mary and Bright onto this little rectangle, trimmed that out, matted that on gold, and now I'm just going to pop it up. And that's literally all I did to this card. Um, this one, I just, I think that, you know, the kind of really detailed background uh, just let's, just lets it be just, it's just enough for me anyway. Um, so I was really happy with the way that one came out for this one. I opted not to pop anything up. I glued all of the flowers down flat as well as the sentiment. Now they are a bit raised because, you know, they're die cuts. So they, they do have a little bit of lift on them. Um, but again, was very happy with the way that this one came out. This flower was the only one that had any overhang. Um, and that's because the other two I stamped off the edge to begin with. Like I, that's all the flower I had to work with to, to start. Um, and so I didn't have to trim off any excess. This one, there's just that one little petal on the right hand side. And just like, it's not even... Um, the colored part of the leaf. It's just the outline from the dye that I just had to trim off just the side. And then this one, even though I love matting my cards, that was kind of my, um, like, usually, that's my go-to. I love a mat. But because of the design of this one with the flowers hanging off the edge, I really didn't think it needed it. The only other thing I did to this was I used some gold, uh, 
like pearl, I guess they're pearls. They're rounded little domes. So yeah, they're pearls. Um, some gold pearls to accent my sentiment um, just on that one. And then that's it. That's both cards. So thank you guys so much for joining me today. I always appreciate your time. I have a crafty day planned with my family today, so I'm super excited about that. Uh, that'll be for another story time. I do hope you'll head over and check out the sale. Thank you so much for your time. I always appreciate it, and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.